Hey there, ever wanted to create cutscenes that tell a story in Unity? Or maybe you wanted to create a dialogue system that allows your characters to talk between each other. Let me show you a very simple and reliable way to do it. Open Unity and create a new project. Give it a name and choose a template. This dialogue system will work with both 2D and 3D, regardless of the pipeline. Now make a new folder called Scripts. Inside it, make a new folder called Dialog System. In here, we're gonna make a new C Sharp script called Dialog Base Class. Get rid of everything we don't need. First of all, I want to put this class inside a namespace called Dialog System. This is a good practice because it allows you to maintain structure and minimize naming conflicts, which is very helpful when you're working inside a team or your project grows and you have a ton of scripts inside. Next, we'll make a coroutine called write text that's gonna be responsible for showing letters one by one with a small delay. Make sure to include the system.collections library, otherwise you won't be able to use the iEnumerator interface. Our write text function is going to have two parameters, one string called input and another text called text holder. We'll also include the unityengine.ui library to be able to use the text component. Now, to explain the logic of what we will do, I will use this short visual example. Excuse my horrible drawing skill. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a loop to take each letter from the input string and put it in the text holder. Then we wait a certain amount of time and move on to the next letter. This process is repeated until we iterate through all the letters from the input string. To make it work in C-sharp, we're gonna write a for loop that's gonna take the letter with the index i from the input string and it's gonna put it in the text holder that text element. We're gonna use wait for seconds to create a small delay between each letter and we're gonna put in a parameter of 0.1 seconds just for now. To test how this works, we're gonna need to go back into Unity and create another script called dialog line. We're gonna put this script inside the dialog system namespace and we're gonna make it inherit from the dialog base class in order to use the function that we wrote in there. And finally copy all the libraries from the dialog base class and paste them in here because we're gonna use the same ones. Remember we talked about the input string and the text holder? We're gonna store them in this class. I'm gonna make them private so they can be accessed by outside classes and I'm also gonna make the input string as realizable fields so it can be edited from Unity. To get the text holder, we're gonna use get component inside the awake function. Next up, go to the dialog base class and change the write text from private to protected in order to make it accessible in the child class. Now inside dialog line, we can just say start coroutine, write text and pass in the input and the text holder and the function will run. Now we can finally test how this works. Let's go back into Unity. Make a new canvas and a new image and place it where you want your dialog to be. Then make a new text component, put it where you want to be and attach the dialog line script to it. Inside the input field, just put in whatever you want. Now you can hit play and be happy that this part works. Or you can find some errors and scream at me in the comment section. Go ahead. Now that this is done, let's add some more functionality to it because this is way too simple to be considered complete. First thing that we will do is we will add a color and a font parameter to the write text function. This will allow you to pick the color and the font for each dialog line separately, giving you the freedom and the flexibility to design your dialogs exactly the way you imagine them. If you go back into Unity now, you will see an error message that comes from the dialog line script. And that's because we haven't assigned a color or a font to the write text function. Let's create two new variables, one called text color and the second one called text font. Put them in the write text function now and the error will go away. Also, let's make them serializable so we can edit them from Unity. One cool thing I like to do with my scripts that have a lot of serializable fields is put in headers. They allow you to create sections with custom names, which helps you find your variables easier and it also looks pretty. Alright, let's test the new features that we've implemented. So I made a new folder called fonts where I put in 5 fonts so we can test out a bit. I'll put the link in the description where you can download them. Now find the text object and from the dialog line script you can edit the text color and the text font. When you want to test the result just hit play and see what happens. 
Next thing that I want to be able to control is the speed of the dialogue. And to do that we'll simply pass in a float parameter called delay into the write text function and put it inside the wait for seconds parentheses. Exactly like the other parameters, the delay needs to be added inside the dialog line script. To keep it clean and structured, I'll put it under a header called time parameters. Then I'll make it serializable and pass it to write text. Go back into Unity and play with this value and see what happens. Despite having all these options, this still doesn't feel complete, so let's add some sound to it. To achieve this, we're gonna need another parameter of type audio clip that we are going to play after each letter appears. I'm gonna put a comment here for now because we are going to need a sound manager that's going to play this sound. Go back to Unity now, go to the scripts folder, create a new folder called core and make a new script inside it called sound manager. I'm going to get rid of everything we don't need in here. And I'm also going to make the script a singleton, which means it can be accessed from any other class inside this project. You may have noticed this weird looking line that says get private set. Basically what this does is it gives the permission to other scripts to get this instance, but it doesn't give them the permission to set it to something different. That's why we use the private set. This is not necessary at all, but again, it's a good practice, especially when you're working with a big team. To play a sound in Unity, we always need an audio source. Ours will be called source and it will be attached to the sound manager game object. That's why we can use get component in order to access it. Next, we're gonna write a public void called play sound that takes in an audio clip and it plays it from the source that we declared earlier. Now we need to go back into Unity and set up the game object. But first we need to fix this error because it's not gonna allow us to continue. It happens because the right text inside dialog line is not getting an audio clip parameter. So we will make a new audio clip variable called sound, we will put it under a sound header and we will pass it into the right text function. Now we can go back to creating our sound manager. Create a new game object, call it sound manager, Click Add Component and select Sound Manager Script. Click Add Component again and select Audio Source this time. Now the only thing that we still need is some audio files to play. I'm gonna make a new folder called Audio and another one called Sound Effects inside. And I'm going to put in some nice sound effects that I found exactly for this purpose. Link in the description. Back to our dialog line object. I'm going to change the delay, I'm going to put in the sound that I want, and I'm also going to change the font as well. One last thing that I almost forgot to do is remove the comment from the dialog base class and actually put in the sound manager function that plays the sound. Alright, let's see how it works. <laughs> Hold up, this is still not finished. It looks like an HTML site from the 2000s and it's still one single line of text, nothing close to a dialogue. First of all, let's improve the visuals. First I'm gonna make a new folder and call it sprites. We're gonna put all the images that we're going to use in here. Go to the link in the description, get the background image and drag it in here. Now create a new UI element and select image. Let's call it background and assign it the image that we just imported. Now make it cover the entire screen. Now make sure to drag the background image over the dialog 1 in hierarchy. Otherwise you won't be able to see the dialog because the background will cover it. Now just tweak the dialog window so it covers the one from the screenshot. I'll also change the color of a dialog window to black and add a white outline to it. Now because we are going to have more dialog lines inside this object, I'm gonna change the name to dialog holder. And also tweak the position of the text inside so it looks nice and change its color to white so it's more noticeable. Now in a dialog you obviously have more lines and more characters. So first of all let's rename the text to dialog line 1. Then we will add an image to it which will represent the character that is talking and we will call it character image. Let's code a bit to make this work. Go to the dialog line script 
and make a new header called character image. Underneath it we're gonna declare two variables, one sprite called character sprite and an image called image holder. And basically when this line will be activated, the image that we created in Unity will be assigned the sprite that we want. When you get back to Unity now you're gonna see two new fields. Make sure to drag the character image into the image holder. Inside the character sprite field you obviously need to drag in a sprite. For this example I will use this image of Sans and Frisk. Go to the link in the description to find them for yourself. Before we can test this feature we need to do two little things. First of all, don't forget to delete the text. Second, we need to make sure that the image holder image will always preserve its aspect. If you delete this line you're gonna see what I mean in a minute. And the final thing here is to make sure that the text holder is always empty when we launch the game, in case we put it something in there and forget to delete it. Let's see if it works. Now let's move on to the final step, which is actually to make sure that this is a system that can play multiple lines of dialogue, not just one. Let's make a dialogue holder script and assign it to the dialogue holder game object. You know the drill by now, let's delete everything we don't need and put it inside the dialogue system namespace. The logic of the script will be real simple, so basically we will have an I enumerator called dialogue sequence, which will loop through all the child objects and activate each one of them accordingly. But there is one thing that you should keep in mind here, so when you actually activate one dialogue line you should deactivate the others, because otherwise they are going to overlap with each other. So we are going to write a new function that's called deactivate, and use it just before we are activating a dialogue line. Another thing that we still have to finish is to tell the dialogue sequence when exactly is the line finished, so it can activate the next one. To achieve this we will use wait until. But we still don't have an indication when the line is finished or not. That's why we're going back to the dialog base class and adding a boolean called finished. I don't want anyone changing this from outside classes, so that's why I'm making it a private set. Logically, our line will be finished when the loop is finished as well, so that's where we put it. Now that we have the variable that we need, we go back to the dialog holder script. We get the dialog line component from the child that we just activated and wait until the line is finished. Before we go back to Unity we need to initialize the dialog sequence coroutine inside the awake function. Another small change that I forgot to do is that we have to go back into the dialog line script and actually initialize the coroutine inside the start function, not the awake one. Now you can go back into Unity and create another dialog line. Make sure it's a child of a dialog holder object. I would recommend just copying the first line and changing the parameters for this one. When you hit play, this is what you should see. Probably you're gonna notice that something is off here. And it's the fact that the first line ended immediately, without giving the player any time to read it. Let's fix this by going to the dialog base class and adding another wait function before we set finish to true. And to allow you to customize this variable as well, I'm gonna put it inside the write text function as a parameter and give it the name of delay between lines. Now when you go back into Unity, the dialog line script is gonna show you an error. And that's because we don't have a delay between lines variable here. So let's make one now, and let's make it serializable so you can tweak it from Unity. Finally, let's pass it to the write text function and try it out. Don't forget to assign the value in the inspector and hit play to see what happens. As you can see, this time the dialogue system waited 2 seconds to give the player the option to read everything before moving on to the next line. We can also implement another idea, which is to wait for player input before moving on to the next line. Personally, I like this idea more because it gives the player more control and agency. You can't accidentally skip a cutscene because you weren't paying attention. And it's actually very easy to implement, so let me show you how to do it. Go back to the dialog base class, and instead of wait for seconds, we're gonna just use wait until and wait for the next mouse button click. That's it, let's test out the result. <laughs> 
working perfectly. One last thing that we need to do before we wrap up is to deactivate the dialog holder after all the lines are over. And we do that by simply saying game object set active false right after the dialog sequence is over. For the final showcase let me go back into Unity and put in a couple more lines to show you that everything is working well and it's gonna be stable no matter how many lines you put in. And this is the final result. Don't mind the dialog box underneath, it's just a part of the background. Once you change it, everything will be perfect. And this is a wrap. Thanks a lot for watching this. This is a long episode and it took a lot of time and effort to make, but I'm really happy with the result because this is an entire dialogue system that gives you a lot of choice and a lot of possibility and it can be used basically in any game that you want. So I hope you find it useful and implement it in your game. So let me know if you want me to extend this into something more like branching dialogue or giving the players the possibility to choose multiple answers to questions. Leave your ideas and feedback in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching, stay safe and keep making games.